I'm Chauncey Applegate, broadcasting to you live from the Purple Street Studios at Jollyville Radio, KJVR. Welcome to another episode of Spoopy the Boop and Chauncey in the Morning, the show that talks about anything but usually means nothing. And I'm your co-host, Spoopy the Boop. Before we get started, let's hear a word from our sponsors. Yar! This is Petunia, the pirate of Pat Penderson's Party Supplies, announcing the Pinata Palooza sale. We have a plethora of playful and pretty party pinatas, perfect for picnic, party, and just plain old fun. Produced with your choice of paper mache or, for specialty purposes, porcelain pottery. Pick up your perfect party purchase today from the preeminent pinata purveyors in town, Pat Penderson's Party Supplies. Spoopy the Boop and Chauncey in the Morning is sponsored by Gold Rush Burgers. Haven't seen any of y'all come by yet, so I wanted to make sure you know we're on Duval Road. Also, we're now hiring Shane's replacement because sometimes people just don't pan out. Gold Rush Burgers, where the frying oil is hot because it's fry oil, Shane. Thank you, sponsors. In today's special episode... We're going to learn a little bit about music from Spoopy. What you may not know about him is that he's a well-regarded amateur musicologist. What are you going to teach us about today, Spoopy? Thanks, Chauncey. Today I'm going to talk about a hotly disputed issue in Soulfedge. Sounds fascinating, Spoopy. But first, why don't you tell our audience a little about how you got so involved in musicology? Sure, Chauncey. Believe it or not, it really started the day I was born. You see, my parents were famous professional musicologists, and they decided they wanted to give me a musical name. So when they were asked, they said, he's boop boop de boop after that very well-known musical phrase, but the nurse just heard Spoopy the Boop, and I guess it stuck. Wow, that's quite a story, Spoopy. Now, what about that Soulfedge controversy? Well, Chauncey, as I'm sure you know, solfege is a musical term that relates to names we use for the notes in a musical scale. That sounds fascinating, Spoopy, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to hold that thought. I've just been told we have some important breaking news from our traffic department. Let's hear directly from our traffic reporter, Julia Stonewash. Thanks, Chauncey. We are suddenly receiving a lot of reports that traffic on the interstate has come to a standstill in both directions near the lake. Traffic appears to be backing up into the surrounding areas, too. So if you are out and about, you'll want to consider avoiding that area. We'll try to get more information about what's going on and provide an update when we know anything definitive. Back to you, Chauncey. Thanks, Julia. Now, Spoopy, you were about to tell us a bit about note names? Yes! You're probably most familiar with Soulfedge from that famous The Sound of Music song, Do A Deer. You know that song, don't you, Chauncey? I sure do, Spoopy. But I'm afraid now we've got some major news from our weather department. Our weather reporter, Kimberly, is here to give us the information. Chauncey, we're suddenly getting a lot of calls about lightning, thunder, rain, and fog near the lake with dramatically reduced visibility. It is very unusual since there's not a cloud to be seen in the sky and there's absolutely nothing showing up on our radar. But we can't ignore the numerous reports coming in and we want our listeners who might be near the lake to be careful. We'll provide another update as soon as we have more detailed information. Thanks, Kimberly. What a strange situation. We're all very excited to learn more about Soulfage, Spoopy. You were about to tell us about the sound of music? Well, not exactly the sound of music, but a well-known song example from the sound of music. So, okay, you know that song with the part that goes, tea, a drink with jam and bread? Uh, Yes, I I think I remember that line, but I'm afraid you're going to have to hang on again, Spoopy. We're now getting a report directly from our roving news reporter, Kitty Westlake. Chauncey, I'm up the hill about a mile and a half south of the lake. And there's a pretty large group standing outside looking nervous in one of those apartment parking lots. I'm approaching them right now and I'll see if anyone can talk to me. Well, my word, what a small world. I've got Paul Fredrickson, mayoral candidate here to talk to us. Can you tell us what's about going on, Paul? 
Well, Kitty, about five minutes ago, I was inside minding my own business when there was what sounded like powerful rolling thunder. It was so loud, it shook the windows and even rattled the floor of my house. When I looked out the window, the sky was totally clear. I remember that it is a really bad idea to be caught inside a building in an earthquake, so I ran outside, alerting as many neighbors as I could on the way. We haven't felt any tremors or aftershocks, Chauncey, but looking down the hill toward the light, there's a thick fog, or maybe smoke blanketed the area. I'm going to head down there to investigate further, and I'll call in when I got more information. What an amazing coincidence, huh, Spoopy? Now, I think you were about to tell us about scones with jam or something. No, no, hold on. Uh, we've now got an update from our traffic reporter. Chauncey, we've been calling various local authorities and have now learned that work is underway today for the dismantling of the fireworks that were lit but never went off from this year's anticlimactic fireworks show. It seems that Jollyville residents have been secretly adding their own fireworks to the fireworks barge that has been stuck in the lake ever since. This section of the lake is near the interstate bridge, so the traffic problems may be related to this activity. If you are driving in that area, please use caution and don't add to any difficulties by rubbernecking. Thanks, Julia, and good advice to our listeners. Now, Spoopy, about my crumpets? T, T-I, Chauncey, made memorable by the line, tea, a drink with jam and bread. Ah, yes. What about it, Spoopy? Well, T is the solfege syllable for the seventh note of the scale, at least according to some musical scholars. But there's disagreement from the Romance languages. Absolutely fascinating, Spoopy, but I'm afraid we're getting yet another update from our traffic reporter. Chauncey, we've just received confirmation that the fire department has completely closed the interstate bridge over the lake to traffic in both directions. Multiple fire trucks have been dispatched to the bridge. No further details have been released at this time, but needless to say to our listeners, should try to avoid that area if at all possible. Wow. Sounds like something pretty dramatic must be happening. We sure hope nobody's been hurt. Now, Spoopy, you were saying something about Valentine's Day? Not Valentine's Day, romance languages. In Spanish, French, Italian, Portuguese, and Romanian, the Solfeld syllable for the seventh note of the scale is C, not T. Gosh, that sounds confusing. Yes, thank you. And to make things even worse, there is also disagreement about whether the first note syllable, do, should be associated with the absolute scale note C or the root note of the current key. Jiminy Cricket, wars have probably been fought over less. But hold on, we're getting a call again from our field reporter, Kitty Wesley. Hello again, Chauncey. I've managed to dodge and weave my way to the bottom of the hill, just below the interstate bridge. Visibility is still limited, but I can see a row of people lined up on the lawn, lying down face up. It looks like they're soaking wet. Oh no, are they injured or unconscious? I sure hope not. I, I don't know. How terrible. No, no, wait. They're starting to sit up and they have silly grins on their faces. I think everyone is okay. I have with Miss Susie who agreed to talk to us about it. That's Aunt Susie to you, Kitty. And I tell you what, it was just amazing. I was out mowing my lawn when there was a huge peal of thunder. Then the sky just lit up with the strangest lightning I've ever seen. Flashes in every color of the rainbow filling the whole sky. Then, as fast as it started, it stopped and the white fog just rolled in so I couldn't see anything. It was so wonderful, I just kept staring up hoping to see more. Eventually, my neck started to hurt and I realized that it would be easier to just lie down on the grass. That's when several neighbors came over beside me to do the same thing. There I go, being a trendsetter as usual. Wow, 
That sounds spectacular. But how did you end up soaking wet? Well, just after we all lay down, it started to pour. I've never seen rain like it before. The skies just opened up like a fire hose. It only lasted a few seconds, and then it was over. Well, what an astonishing story. The visibility is really improving rapidly now, Chauncey. I'm going to get moving again and try to find out more about what has happened here today. I'll call back in as soon as I have anything more to tell our listeners. Well, Kitty, please continue to stay safe as you investigate. We're just about out of time for today's episode, but we will be sure to bring our listeners further information about today's strange events as soon as we have it. Looks like we have a few minutes left, Spoopy. Just enough time to cover the controversy surrounding French overdotting. I was hoping so, but Julia is calling back and seems to have an important update. Thank you, Chauncey. I've been told by Jollyville Fire Department that a controlled dismantling of the dud fireworks went wrong, causing a simultaneous detonation of all the fireworks at once. As they scrambled to extinguish the burning barge, one of the firemen was lifted into the air on a fire hose that sprayed water all over the interstate and surrounding neighborhoods. There were no injuries, but the flames have since been extinguished. What an eventful morning we've all had so far, and how fascinating it was to learn about the Solfege controversies. Next time, Chauncey will tell us a little bit about how his chinchilla ferret hybridization experiments are going. Stay tuned to Jollyville Radio on KJVR. That's all from Spoopy the Boop and Chauncey in the Morning. Now it's time for Community Beat, where we leave Jollyville to talk to real people doing great work to build community. This week, we sent Uncle SR to Atlanta to talk with Kai Tyson of Kuluntu Reproductive Justice Center. All right. This is Jollyville Community Beat with Uncle Lazar, where we turn the spotlight on good people who are doing great things in the real world. Today I'm speaking with Kai Tyson, founder and chief executive officer at Kuluntu Reproductive Center in Hotlanta, Georgia. How's it going, Kai? It's going well. How are you doing, Asar? I'm good. I'm good. Kaluntu. Now, that's a powerful word, Kai. So I was looking for a name. I became a doula in 2018, and I was looking for a name for my business. Kaluntu means community in Fosa, which is a language spoken in South Africa. Um, so yeah, it means community, and I really wanted to, with my name, I wanted to convey that like community is is the foundation on which a lot of the things that I do um, is based because without community we don't we can't live our best lives without other people. So Kai you mentioned the word doula could you explain that for us? Yeah um, a doula is a someone who works with pregnant families to prepare them for labor and delivery and for postpartum life. So there are different types of doulas. Basically, a doula is someone who helps someone else with something. Like there are death doulas, there are um, labor and delivery doulas, there are abortion doulas, there are postpartum doulas, there are all types of doulas. Basically, like people who guide you through a transition or through a um, specific huge, yeah, like a huge transition in a life. So can you tell us about the services and supports uh, that are provided by Kulun 2? Yeah, um, I'll talk about pre-Rona and then currently. Um, before COVID-19, um, like I said, I trained to be a doula and I also trained to be a childbirth educator. So I was, um, you know, marketing those services to the community and I also have a background in education. Um, and so, you know, and I've also, I also have a background in event management and so I was thinking about how can I create educational events for the community how can I kind of combine all these different uh, skills and, and um, experiences that I have so that you know the community can benefit and so um, I started putting on events the first event I put on was meet the doulas 
um, just a space for pregnant families and doulas and birth workers to come together, um, network, get to know each other, and hopefully, you know, folks can can find the doula they want to work with. Um, and then also, I started putting on events for queer and trans families in Atlanta. Um, because a lot of the LGBTQ friendly spaces aren't really family friendly and a lot of the family friendly spaces aren't LGBTQ friendly. So then you have these families that kind of don't have anywhere to go. And so um, that's like a game night type of event. Um, and then I was also starting up a, an educational series for other birth workers um, to help them strengthen their business acumen so that they can stay in business and sustain and make money and live off of being a doula. Um, and so all that was happening and things were going great. And then COVID-19. After, after all that happened, I kind of had to figure out how to pivot. Uh, what I was doing. And so I started um, offering virtual doula uh, packages as well as I moved the uh, education series for the business education series for doulas online. So that's a virtual series now. So um, yeah, and then also after um, after the death of George Floyd, I was, you know, like most of the country, like devastated and didn't know what to do or how to help. And so I thought on it and I was like, well, you know, what can I do where I am? I don't necessarily have to go on the front lines. What can I do with what I have? And so I decided to start making postpartum care packages for uh, black moms. And I just sent those out last week. And so I'm starting to get replies from people who are saying, oh, I just received my care package. Thank you so much. And so um yeah that's been that's what our offerings are looking like right now i don't think i have the capacity to add anything else so i think we're going to roll with that for a while if people want to contact you to learn more about your work or make a monetary or in-kind donation where can they find you yeah i am most active on instagram you can find me at k-u-l-u-n-t-u R-J-C, Kaluntu R-J-C. Um, I'm also on Facebook. You can search Kaluntu Reproductive Justice Center um, or it's facebook.com slash Kaluntu R-J-C. Um, as far as if you would like to donate to the postpartum care packages, I'm still sending out, I'm sending out another wave of care packages in a couple of weeks. Um, you can send money via PayPal, paypal.me slash Kaluntu R-J-C. Um, or cash app dollar sign Kaloon to RJC. Give us that website one more time. PayPal.me slash Kaloon to RJC, K U L U N T U R J C, and then cash app dollar sign Kaloon to RJC. Excellent. Excellent. Kai, it has been wonderful talking with you, and we wish you the best of the best. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me. This was fun. This has been Jollyville Community Beat with Uncle Asar, and dig this. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. Peace. The creative team who wrote and recorded Jollyville Radio includes Uncle Asar Akabaline, Emily Ansonick, Lizzie Brister, Michael Crosa, Michelle Darcy, Richard Dayries, Asa Gardiner, Brian Green, Susanna Kay, Pilar Kepperda, Brian Routson, and Thomas Schlitt. It is directed by Michael Crosa with lead editing provided by Monsi Santian and social media help from Amy Costa. The recording was made in accordance with social distancing. We'd love to hear from you. We welcome questions for Paul, nominations for Community Beat, and any other suggestions for things happening in Jollyville. Find us on the web at jollyvilleradio.com or on Facebook and Instagram at Jollyville Radio. Jollyville Radio is a production of Jollyville Brass Quintet, member of Austin Creative Alliance. We are based in Austin, Texas. For KJVR, I'm Jimmy Piecrest. We'll see you next time on Jollyville Radio.